CatarectCoach.com. Complete cataract case, toric extended depth of focus IOL. And you can see a beautiful outcome there in the picture. Let's show you the whole case start to finish. So this is a young patient in his 40s. And you can see it's quite an opaque cataract. So we're putting in some tripan blue dye, which is going to help stain that lens capsule. It also makes the lens capsule a little bit less elastic. Putting a steri strip here just to get some of those eyelashes out of the way. We want to keep our field nice and clean, no eyelashes in the way. So that steri strip is quite helpful. Now we're waiting for the tripan blue dye to take its effect and stay in that capsule. And remember, it also does decrease capsule elasticity. In a young person like this, that capsule can be almost too elastic. We diluted the dye right now with some anesthetic. And here's our dispersive viscoelastic, putting that in and exchanging out the remainder of that dye. So there's the cataract. You can see very opaque in the middle. Patient had quite poor visual acuity, about 20 out of 200. And now this is the patient's better eye. And I'll tell you more about that. Here's the diamond keratone being used to create a self-sealing temporal incision there, getting the architecture just right. That looks perfect. And we're making that on the steep axis of astigmatism. The patient has against the rule astigmatism with a steep axis of just about 10 degrees. So starting the capsular axis, we want that 5 millimeter round capsular axis well centered. That's measuring it. Look carefully at those forceps. You can see the marks at the tip of it, which indicate 2.5 and, and then 5 millimeters. So careful to create a really nice round centered capsular axis and it's a little off our screen here, but remember my microscope view is much bigger than the video. There's the finished rexus, looks beautiful, and let's measure, it's exactly five millimeters. That looks great. Now the lens is gonna be relatively soft. There may be some central nuclear uh, density, but most of the lens is soft. So hydrosection, nice and gently, just using balanced salt solution on a 27 gauge blunt cannula. And you want to prolapse that nucleus partially out of the caps or bag. So taking our time here, setting those fluid waves around. And once you get that nucleus partially out of the bag, it'll give you a little wider margin of safety. There's the dense endonucleus. So that's the only part that has any density to it. Recoating the endothelium with that viscoelastic. And we can put the phaco probe in the eye. And this should be relatively easy to aspirate. So there's the densest part of the nucleus, which we can go into first, use a chopper and chop that into smaller segments, break it apart. There you go. And the epinuclear shell, which is relatively large in this case, is going to be also pretty soft. So that'll be easy to aspirate. Now, the patient has a history of hyperopia in both eyes, astigmatism in both eyes, and an isometropic amblyopia. So this eye that we're operating on is his better eye. And the lens power ends up being a 25.0 diopter. His other eye, which is yet to have surgery, is going to need a 29 diopter IOL for the same outcome of amitropia. Now, because the patient's primarily dependent on this left eye for all of his work, we wanted to choose a lens that's gonna give him a really wide range of vision. And in this situation, that means an extended depth of focus lens because it'll increase his effective depth of field. And so in this situation, the patient's able to do great distance vision, just about 20-20 vision, but also able to do useful things at the intermediate zone, such as use his computer all day and also use his mobile phone. So these are important tasks, especially for a younger person like this, who's still in his 40s, still working full time, still has... 50 years of life ahead of him. So we definitely want that. Now, in his other eye, here's one of the challenges. This 25 diopter lens that we're gonna put in this eye is the highest power that is made for this vividity extended depth of focus lens. So his other eye, which needs a 29 diopter lens, is gonna get a standard monofocal torque lens, not extended depth of field. Is that okay? It's perfectly fine. In fact, he, remember, this patient is reliant on primarily his left eye to do, let's say, at least 75% of the viewing tasks instead of splitting the eyes 50-50. So you want to have this best quality lens in this eye, and the other eye will do very well by treating the anisotropia, making the other eye also plano, so both eyes will have a plano outcome. Um, but remember, the other eye is limited by the amblyopia to a little bit less best corrected visual acuity. 
So, and we're not going to be able to rewire his brain. He's 40 years old. So as you know, whatever amblyopia has set in by age about 10 or 12, that's it for life. So cleaning out the capsular bag, really taking our time here to make it as clean as possible. There you can see the torque marks on the lens. We're going behind the optic. Very important. You want this optic to be able to directly touch the posterior capsule. Don't have a viscoelastic layer in there because you need the lens to be centered with respect to the extended depth of focus central zone that you'll see there. But also you need the lens in the correct meridian or rotational axis to line up the toricity for treatment of the astigmatism. So now we're just gonna nudge the lens slightly, get it into the exact position that we want. And remember, we have marks on the cornea, which are gonna show us that exact steep axis. And you can see the Purkinje images in the center, the reflection of those lights. Those three dots, the two sets, that's the first and fourth Purkinje images. So when we line those up, those should be um, right in the center of the central part of the optic. And we'll look at that one more time. So going here through the side port, just washing out some little bit of extra viscoelastic, getting this just clean, just the way we want it. Now, you spent so much time preparing for this case, this is the critical part. Spend the extra moments getting the lens position as perfect as you can. Take your time, flush out that viscoelastic, seal up the incision again, really make sure the lens is well positioned. You want to have that optic overlap for 360 degrees by that caps rex, which you see there. Now look at the Purkinje images. When you line them up to avoid parallax, wow, those are right in the center of that beam-shaping element of the optic. And we look at the toric marks as well. There you go. They're exactly lined up on the steep axis. So this is a just perfect lens position. Very happy there. We're going to put some triamcinolone in the eye, just a little bit, about a half milligram, to help quell any post-op inflammation. And we'll also put a little bit of moxifloxacin as an antibiotic to prevent infection. Very important for this patient who has one really good eye. Let's make sure we do everything we can to get a beautiful outcome. Final step here, we're just going to put some um, anesthetic there over the incision, and let's check, make sure it's perfectly sealed. And that looks beautiful, and I'm happy to tell you, the patient had a beautiful outcome. Thanks so much for watching.